Welcome to Argue Bros, the podcast that gives you multiple perspectives on today's hottest topics. Hosted by Nico Pingin, Fred in Progress, and Jess Freeman. If you're looking for some inspiration from and for normal people, or simply want to know the bros a little more, you better open up your mind to the fresh perspective that's coming your way right now. And now, welcome to the next episode of Argue Bros, the podcast where you got Nico Pingin, your co-host, you got Jess Freeman, your co-host, and you got Fred in Progress, your other co-host, you know what I'm saying? Uh, today, what we what we had, we was talking about Mr. Lefty No Shooter. Bro, we oh, man. Into the Sims. Man, y'all seen that this dude is getting fined like $8 million in an escrow account? Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Do you see that he's getting fined $8 million? In an escrow account? Not at all. 8.7, something like that, right? That's 25. That's 25 percent of his contract, bro. They playing hardball now. Like, man, I don't know. Yo, what if that's like the same thing that uh, Schroeder had to do, type of thing? Like, they're only gonna give him like seven, eight million, so he has to like create all this unnecessary drama to keep the NBA. Like, I'm doing conspiracy theory. I'm sorry for everybody who actually thinks this is actually real. I'm just like, yo, what if? He's only guaranteed to get paid like 15 million. And like when they signed quote unquote 60 million, his whole job was to become the scapegoat. I don't know. I don't know. Cause this is just like, whoa, this dude is giving up how much money? Like what? And he, he's like, it's like, you're a spoiled child. Like what? You just like, I don't want to play there because they, 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 they talk bad about how I play. It's like, well, you played bad. And <laughs> bro, it's a, it's, a, they on, they on fight now. They fighting each other. They're going like, to starve him for money and, and uh, I wonder what Clutch Sports is going to do. They're going to go on with people, Rich Paul. Oh, because he, he signed with them? Yeah, he signed with Clutch Sports. Rich Paul, LeBron, and them. Oof. Hey, but man, when Joel V said, forget it. I'm tired of this Ben Simmons boy. He's like, he's the reason Jimmy isn't here. He's the reason they traded Jimmy Butler and signed Al Horford. But I thought I thought everybody knew that. Like, I mean, apparently not, because it was a huge shock. And and Joel and B apparently like, what? and everyone just like, I guess Joel and B done with uh, Ben Simmons after Ben Simmons was talking about him. That was a shock. That was the media day, yes. Because Jimmy Butler, it was like it was like his team. He beat the 76ers with the third strings, right? Yeah, they traded. They tra- No, no, they traded him mainly though. I heard about that too. They mainly traded him though because the Ben Simmons wanted the ball in his hands more, and so that's why they got rid of Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, like the 76 yeah what because the 76ers gms and and whatnot they knew that most people didn't even most people knew that sir i don't know about that it's like your your biggest star is traded because you're looking at your uprising star being better and you're saying i want ben simmons with the ball nine times out of ten versus jimmy let's get rid of him and let's get more pieces it might be that now he's just blatantly open about it but I don't think. Oh, that's- I forgot. No, the bit, the news part of it. Yeah, you're right. The news part of it was that he said it was a bad, it was a bad deal. Which basically, oh, he said that. Yes. He's, oh, he yeah. said that for real. <laughs> yeah, he's just that's, that's that was the part of it. They he's, they he's saying it was the bad thing, and, and they got out for so he's like that they shouldn't have done that or something like that. He's like, yeah, he's like, I don't know what he's talking about. The seven sixers built their enti- the entire team around him. And now he did being disrespectful. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said borderline kind of disrespectful. Yeah, because think about it. If if you have your whole your whole front office get rid of one of the best stars because they put all their faith in you, and instead of living up to expectations or even showing up to work, because I'm assuming that that's what Joel Embiid is referring to, like at least show up to work, bro. Yeah. Like they got rid of everybody. They got. Al Horford to grab your rebounds. They got Al Horford to like hit your threes because you ain't doing none of that stuff. They got people that are willing to go to the side because Jimmy is not going to go to the side. And instead of stepping up to the plate, acknowledging that you aren't good, like how he did when he lost and he was crying and he was memed forever for crying, for trying his hardest. And he's like, I need to go back to the gym and get better. It's like, dude, you need to go and work your butt off. You can't just be out here just like being mad, disrespectful. You know, it's like it would have been real better. It would have been much, much better if he would have been like, yeah, you've been hanging out too much with them Kardashians, bro. Like you, you spoiled. You think you're just going to cry and pout and you're just going to get traded just because you don't like this? Like, nah, man, you need to go out here and you need to, you need to 1v1 me in the gym. (laughs) 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 Hit him with Hit him with some, hit him with some Shaq or Kobe, because I know Shaq and Kobe used to do stuff like that. Like, man, you you talking real disrespectful out here. You need. Were you talking about two of the almost greatest players in the f- history of basketball, though? 
You can't compare Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid to them. I'm not trying to disrespect anybody or anything. Nah, their relationship. Because remember, Kobe and Shaq were really their relationship close. is more like... And they got fractured. Like D'Angelo Russell and fucking... What's his name again? I yeah, yeah. Nick Young. Nick Young. <laughs> That's what the relationship yeah. is like, right? It's like when they're around each other, they don't want to talk to each other. They got like... This little boy complex, like, no, stay away from me. Stay away from me. <laughs> I'm waiting until Ben Simmons has his villain arc once he gets traded. He's not gonna have no fucking villain arc. <laughs> I mean, I think he is, I think he's in his villain arc. How many right fans now? are not gonna want him on their team? Like, I, and are gonna be and are gonna be upset when if the, for the pieces that are traded for him. So whatever team he goes to, if he's traded for pe- players that are good that people actually liked on their team, they're not gonna be happy. So he's gonna have a villain arc until either he performs or not. No, like I like I like the trade that was proposed by uh, Stephen A. when he said Washington Wizards. Because if you can put him in a team full of scrubs that don't want to rise up to the Russell Westbrook, Bradley Beal, what he he does not fit there. Russell Westbrook's on the Lakers, bro. Oh, yeah, I forgot he joined with the Lakers, my fault. Yeah, hey, he's with the Lakers. Ben Simmons is a pass-first guy. Yeah, and Bradley Bill, he's going to sign somewhere else. <laughs> no, no, like, even if Bradley stays, just think about it. If you got Bradley and you got Ben, Ben constantly passing it out to Bradley, Bradley might want to, you know, um, be tired of it, but because Ben always has a pressure just driving to the paint, taking two people with him, it's an easy kick out. And they got shooters. They got plenty of people. The issue is with Philly, they're demanding him to do it. They're like, hey, man, you're getting paid this money to do this. You're not getting paid to drive to the paint and kick it. You're not Rondo. No, nah, you need to make this. You need to make these layups, bro. Not only these layups, dude, you're like almost seven feet tall. You need to be yamming on these six foot two guards. You got to notice when you're wide open, sir. No, nah, like you, you've been guarding by Kemba Walker and you're passing it up in the paint. Like what? Like, bro, imagine, imagine your coach seeing some stuff like that in, in college or high school. Like a seven foot two or a seven foot dude passing it up because like I'm in the paint. It's like like even me, I'd be like, bro, are you dumb? Like <laughs> what? Yeah, in practice, bro, then everybody look at you like, look at this guy. Like, why are you passing it out? That's like, well, he got good defense. It's like, what? If you the good def, you seven foot, hook it over him. It's like, well, well, what if I miss? Like, get the rebound. Watching that play, watching that play when when they were only down two and he could have dunked and they would have been tied. Oh, he was wide open, right? Yeah, I didn't realize it was two point difference. I forgot. I ain't seen him in it. It's like he, now I remember why it's so crazy. I mean, a little two point difference, man. They showed the clip of Joel and B's reaction. He's like one of those kids in like high school stumping around and their teammate does something oh, yeah. stupid and he's just at the top of the key. He's like, oh, I was like, I was like, dang, that is so sad. That is so sad. They could have won. I cannot believe they actually got up. I like Joel and B, but he fucking cries too much. He, 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 he got his own shit to work on too. I don't like either one of them more than the other. Facts, facts. He got past him. He got, he got to work. It's not like he's perfect. Maybe he's getting practice. He got he got to work. Nigga, he seemed like he got passion, but I don't know. I don't know. I gotta hear stories behind the scenes. Bro. I've heard. I heard the story really lazy. You know, we working hard. Yeah. Yeah. For real? Yeah. Yeah. The mad story about last year. We're talking about it. But wasn't he close to like MVP? Yeah. That too. And he's always in the MVP talk. That's why people say he could be yeah. amazing if he actually worked out and got in shape and stopped getting injured and crying. And- but but he is who he is. If I'm like, they're great, he'd be amazing, was the was the criticism. I mean, Kobe did say that if Ben Simmons started to get a jumper, he'd be unstoppable. Nigga, he would. Because he already draws two people that, bro, when he first came into the league, he was being compared to LeBron. I mean, he, was, he plays like a point guard like LeBron and Magic. You feel me? So Magic knows how to make layups and dunk, and he knows how to take a hook shot over shorter people and over taller people. Nigga, Magic even know how to shoot. I mean, Magic played all five positions. Like, like honestly, honestly, like even though we're talking about Ben Simmons, I just want to say shout out Magic. Magic, I think is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, over Jordan. This dude won everything his first year. His Literally. first. Now you know it's crazy. Before I knew about basketball. I knew, like, before Kobe was my favorite player, Isaac Johnson was my favorite player. No cap. Like, bro, the things he was able to do with the basketball, fool everybody, do anything he wanted on the court whenever he wanted. He had fun, smiled, and was competitive. Never wanted... Bro, he treated he treated a game, and it, it looked like he was playing so easily against them and winning like it's nothing, bro. Yeah, it's like, like, you know, when you have, like, a college student playing with, like, middle schoolers or whatever, just like, man, that was embarrassing. And that that's a rookie. <laughs> it was a Harlem Globetrotters playing on an NBA level. Yeah, it's like that. But I like how every I like how every show has its rival though, because you see how then this fucking introvert ass kid 
white boy come over here and get some buckets on his head. Shout out to Larry Bird. Yeah, I know them dudes was hating each other forever. <laughs> Yo, facts. <laughs> Motherfucker ain't let me win. Like from Indiana and Michigan State, I watched that game. Like them dudes was just Yo, like, even high school. Like, but that's that's almost like one of those stories that are, are kind of like written in the stars kind of thing, where it's like no matter what happens, no matter what era, no matter where, and so you're always gonna have that one same individual that's always gonna be constantly either in your path or pushes you to become the best version of yourself, whether you want to or not. Sometimes you'd rather not, but you know what I'm saying? Look at those opportunities that they were able to, you know, do with each other. They were able to push each other so much that, you know, Larry's just crazy because he was able to um, still want to play, even though like he was never healed. And that's like almost similar to Kobe. Like, man, imagine if these dudes, just like Derrick Rose, like imagine if these dudes didn't get injured type of thing. Nah, it would... Derrick Rose would have six rings right now. I swear to God. Unrealized potential is so sad. Man, he should have got knees over toes, man. <laughs> what? He this guy on Instagram trains knees. He could have got knees over toes, man, so he could have landed his knees would have been strong. And that way his oh, yeah. frame would have been stronger. Yeah, a lot of people picked apart his videos. <laughs> yeah, they picked out his video on his landing, whatever. But when you're from the hood, they don't really teach you how to that's, land. They just Bro, that's what I was about to say, like... Nigga, when you got talent, they just exploit that talent, nigga. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about how you maneuver, how you who you look up after, who you move your game after. Dude. How you eat. They just care about how you play, bro. Like Yeah, like especially like I saw the post that he put recently. Like he used to hustle to make money even play, play for money and stuff like that. Like Oh yeah, yeah. He's not worried about how he's landing. He's worrying about crossing the dude and doing an up and under or over or whatever or yamming in his face just to make that bread. He's not worried that he's going to land and injure himself. Like, think about it. That dude was nice and he was playing for money on the street. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a different circumstance. But now, you know, and then Ben Simmons got it all and now he's just like complaining. I'm pretty sure Derek would be like, man, I wish I could get half of that contract you know what type of yeah, things i, I think Derek still i think Derek's still balling what you mean but he ain't got ben simmons money what you mean ben simmons that's a bro that's a ben simmons better not even have derrick rose money <laughs> no he locked in for a four contract he got a four-year contract whenever he gets the money yeah but after that four-year contract everywhere else he bounce around in the nba his value is gonna just decrease horribly he has two tracks. He can go. He can get really good, or he can stay stagnant, or he can just get worse. But I mean, I doubt he's gonna. Get I mean, worse. a lot of GMs, a lot of GMs like Ben Simmons. He has one try, not not to me, but like you. It's always written, bro. The first season after you get traded, if you don't do well, you're not gonna. Not even about his game. Now he just has a chip on his shoulder. Of people don't want to deal with him because he's difficult. Possibly he, he just the way he moves around business wise. Nah. They may not want to deal with him as a player. He got Rich Paul for agent. He'll clean it up. Rich Paul, no, they may not want to deal with Rich Paul no because they're difficult. You know what I'm saying they got. They got hey, Rich Paul, that guy. He got Lonzo forty mil when a lot of people were saying Lonzo wasn't even worth twenty. Nah, that's facts. Rich that's Paul, fast. that guy, bro. I'm telling you, he'll be like, hey, hey. You did good getting attention. Now let's get you to the playoff contending team. I know you didn't like Ben, uh, 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 Joel Embiid or whatever. He's always eating, you know, cheeseburgers and stuff like that. And you actually trying to work on your game <laughs> because he did say he's gonna go to the gym. All I have to say is I don't care what he says. Not to the 76ers, Jim. That pass is unacceptable. That pass is unacceptable. I don't care. Not, and uh, everything else, yes, was wrong as well. But which which one? Which path? The pass when he was down by two, when he was rally, all he had to do was score. He just had to lay up or dunk. Like that pass is unacceptable. You cannot pass in the moment because you're scared of being fouled and, and having to having to shoot free throws. Like, bro, like that is crazy. What if in his mind he was just stat padding? <laughs> Why would you stat pad at the worst time of the game? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not Ben Simmons. I'm not I'm not a point guard. Like I don't get incentives for for assists. I know people who stat pack because that's a real ass thing, bro. But if you're a player that focuses on stat padding bef before winning a game, you are a worthless person, bro. Like I know you saw when when Rondo did it did a, a alley oop, not an alley oop, but behind the he did yeah, I think an alley oop off the blackboard to LeBron in the playoffs, and they were like almost up by two or three points. And I was like, like bro, you to have Rondo, like he's a backup point guard. He's there for pizzazz. This is the LA Lakers. This nigga, it's Philadelphia, nigga. You Philadelphia don't need don't need pizzazz. They need a fucking winning environment. Them niggas is sad as fuck right now. They're a great defensive team. They need someone what who can control the ball now.
Yo, defense ain't gonna get you shit nowadays, but you gotta get buckets, nigga. No, Curry defense, changed the defense game. Defense is defense is good. They were the top one of the top defense. Defense is good. They got him there. And look what happened. They got eliminated. No, they were gonna do good. Ben Simmons literally tanked them. He literally tanked them. He's he's one of the superstars. And when your superstar is literally being a negative influence, not even not just not even stagnant, literally a negative influence. How are you supposed to be a t- the same team you were in, in regular season? So of course, if, so if they could replace Benson with any other competent player, hey, wait, they know Benson is gonna mentally break down. They ain't no mental Ben Bill gonna break down like Markel Fultz couldn't shoot a free throw. Now Ben Simmons can't even play the game in the last Whoa. quarter. Nigga, Markel Fultz got into a motorcycle accident and he and they covered it up, which made it worse on his part. Ben Simmons got into a Kardashian accident. Okay, it took it took away his skills. That's why he can't shoot. Literally, that's why he's asking more than what he can offer. <laughs> we need to keep them hoes around. Excuse my French, but I'm not in France. He's asking more than what he can offer for a reason. He's like, hey man, I'm I'm I hang out with you know, high value people. I know my worth, and it's like, all right, go to the I gym. Need your money, yeah, baby. Also, though, wouldn't wouldn't it be fair to say also since he made that blunder, it's like I think he might be feeling that the whole franchise just like didn't have his back, even though he knows like, bro, you should have just yammed in on this dude. It's like I think he wanted to like, no, have like some about s- they shit. They're gonna call you on that, like bro. You can't just not say that. that that's a huge blunder. Just like J.R. Smith when when LeBron when the time was going down, LeBron's like, "What are you doing?" When you, you what he, he took yeah, yeah, but immediately talking th- about no more. Ten, yeah, ten seconds afterwards, LeBron. Yeah, ten seconds afterwards, it's a joke now. It's a meme and a joke, and not like it's not like everyone's piling on the thing because he has no character because he can't take take criticism and hasn't improved in five years. How do you like it so far? Don't forget to reach out via social media and suggest the next hot topics to argue about. Right after the Bravo was like, uh, no, I, we were talking about something else. Like he didn't dog his teammate. Not the same on the 76ers. 76ers, everybody dogged him. Doc Rivers dog. Uh, the, the GM dogged him. Joel and me dogged him. That is everybody facts. dogged him. As soon as they happened, Le- LeBron looked at him and like, what are you doing? And then he said, All right, let's move forward. What are we gonna do next? Moving forward. Da 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 da. Joel and beat is a man, this guy is so disrespectful. We got rid of our best player, man. Oh, the Sixers got two to three years saying this shit. The Sixers got two to three years saying telling this nigga, yo, please get better. Please shoot. Please shoot. And then he does this, bro. They if he if he would have did that layup and they would have won, they would have had, yeah, they would have had momentum. And that would have he they would have rolled that shit possibly even to the finals. Possibly. Possibly. No, I think I think uh, I think Giannis was still knocking out, but they would have Nah, made definitely, it. definitely. But you never know because with them two competing against each other, that would have been if real. Ben Simmons was a Ben Simmons with if Ben Simmons was not Ben Simmons, yeah, they probably they could have had a better chance. Because yeah. if Ben's because think about anybody that's a shooter can get it on on a specific night. I can't wait till the heat play. Now, even if you're not a shooter, you can get it on at any night. Terrence Mann dropped 49 points. What do you mean? You saying he's not nice? Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm not saying, Hold he's, on, no, no. I'm not saying he's not nice, but he's that not a is. shooter. He's not J.J. What? Redick. He is not. Wow. Uh, you're so disrespectful to Terrence Mann. I'm not. Terrence Mann is an up-and-coming young man that's going to kill the game for sure. Bro, he dropped like a couple games of the 30 during the regular season. When 30, been- 30. Oh, yeah, bro. He baller, bro. He's a baller. And he jammed on Rudy Gobert. Bro. We talking about we talking about shooters though. I understand he's a baller, but can he hit ten out of fifteen threes on, on a given night? Give him a chance. That's what I'm saying. Even if you're not a shooter, you could do it. But he is a shooter. He's an NBA player. <laughs> Just because you- they all shooters. They oh now nah, that's not, okay. Now nah, that's facts. That's facts. That's Every, facts. from the one to the five. Like I think the only I think about it like uh, out of everybody the one who's not a shooter is Ben Simmons. Because <laughs> <laughs> even Joel Embiid can hit threes, bro. Joel Embiid got that splash, bro. He's scared about shooting free throws too. Yeah, uh, he missed more free throws in one season than Steve Nash did in his whole like seventeen, eighteen. Bro, just career. underhand that at this point. Like, come on now. And like, and there's no shame that because people only care about results. That's facts. You don't give a fuck about, I'm going to the gym today. Like, who give a fuck about gym day, nigga? Show me you can hit a fucking shot. Please, nigga. I need, I'm betting on this game. Please. <laughs> this is my red money. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I got kids, nigga. I got kids. 
No, nah, we need we need a new we need a new uh bet. We need, like over under Ben Simmons free throws missed. <laughs> and and I bet you we're five under five. I also bet you though <laughs> those Philly fans, those Philly fans will be like, hey, I'd be okay with losing my rent money if you tried, bro. I'd be okay with you. <laughs> not your that's how many how yeah, how many Philly fans lost some money on that alone? Like him not him him that one free throw. The many- whole city, what you mean? A whole city lost money on him. Yeah, they're they're money invested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You imagine how many underground people were like, "Hey, hey, are we allowed to put a hit on an NBA guy?" Because <laughs> I can't believe he missed that. Like, I'm a shooter. I'll show him how to make a shot. <laughs> he didn't even shoot. He like passed. As soon as off season come, this motherfucker do not go back to his Philly home, bro. He goes straight to like L.A. <laughs> Word. L.A. or Australia. <laughs> I mean, he knows what's up if he pull up to the wrong hood. Yeah, wrong place in Philly. He a target now. Hey, man. Hey, man. I put $700 at y'all would have hey, won. If they don't, if, even if they don't shoot him, they're going to shoot him with words. Hey, big boy. Hey, non-shooter. Oh, yeah. You know, they're going to... And that, that, that's going to hurt him deeper than a bullet wound because at least a bullet wound, he'll be like, hey, man, I I, I took a stand. <laughs> with words? <laughs> with words? Nah. He's gonna be, it's going to be resonating in his brain forever. Just like just like that disrespectful comment with with Joel Embiid, that's gonna be resonated in him forever. It's gonna be with it's gonna stick to him. Like man, this guy thinks I'm disrespectful when he disrespected me first. It's like bro, you missed a layup opportunity to try to do something to win the game. You know what I'm saying? See, when they had that relationship, Joel Embiid could have told him that on the on the floor after he did that. But they ain't had the relationship. They ain't close. Otherwise, he'd be like, nigga, what are you doing? You garbage can. How you gonna miss that layup, my guy? And they would have hashed it out on the thing if there was like a, a good team chemistry. Obviously, they ain't got the team chemistry. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Like back to what I said in the beginning. Like, what if this is just some NBA entertainment? Like Ben Simmons got to do all this, and everybody's like, ah, he, this guy's losing money. Just like Schroeder, he has to give up that opportunity because they ain't they ain't gonna pay him that money. And in this case, like Ben Simmons don't want to play with this guy, and he's already content with his couple millions. And he knows that there's gonna he knows he is not the worst point guard or the second worst or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Man, stuff like that makes me laugh. Like, why why would NBA announce shit like that knowing damn well it's not gonna happen? Like what's up? It's like you know when they get when they let the public know like, oh my god, Ben Schroeder is eligible for an eighty million dollar contract. Like, no the fuck he's not. No the fuck he's not. Why? <laughs> they want to. They want to. They want to get everybody like, oh my goodness! Did you hear that Alex? Alex, what's his name in in OKC? Alex Alexander Gil, Gil, Gilchrist, the guy who just signed the max. Oh, today. Alexander! Al, oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Gil, 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 Gil. And MPJ too. No, nigga, Alexander. MPJ too. Michael Porter Jr. too. And a lot, a lot of people are like, why are these two dudes getting a max contract? Like what? Michael Porter is the real deal, though. I know, but he's the real deal after like a couple years and a m- nasty injury. Injury, yeah, yeah, that's facts. That's tough. That's taking a bet. That's a yeah, exactly. That's a bet that the, just like uh, with Giannis onto the Kupo, they took a bet on the guy. <laughs> no, they're like Ben Simmons. <laughs> except with ben, ben Simmons paid off early, but he's falling off way too fucking early. Versus Giannis, yeah, they they just locked him into a four year, and now he's failing. Yeah, he locked into a big contract. Like Giannis came in as low, and he just like bailed every year until like right now. Everybody's like, "Damn, why did no other team?" He's only been trending upwards. Yeah, like he, and versus Ben Ben Simmons came in. Everybody was hyping him up, like, "Oh, he's the next LeBron James. He's the next big guy." I said he's six foot eleven, and he can handle the ball like LeBron. He could drive. He can pass. He and but he can't shoot though. He never could shoot though. If Brooklyn stays healthy. <clears throat> Milwaukee's out of the picture. I'm sorry. KD, nigga, KD dropped 50. If Kyrie dropped 50 and Harden dropped 50 and everybody else do their role. He's he, he not getting vaccinated. He, he can't play in New York. Oh, my fucking God. I forgot this guy's trying to be an activist now. Wait, he's, he, he. <laughs> no, nah, imagine. That. For New York teams, um, you can't play in New York if you're not vaccinated. If you can't play home, you can't play home games. Yeah, he just got to play away games. It's 82 games. Motherfucker, what if you're in the playoffs? What about home games? Is it still like that? But, but think about it. Think about it. Wait, wait. Y- y'all not looking at the positive. That means he's going to be super well-rested for away games. 
the team can actually do it's like it's similar to what soccer they can do does. Fine with just James Harden and, and Kevin Durant, but I mean, like, like in soccer, they do that. They'll rotate. Well, they'll create a rotation. Well, they'll draft the whole team, like the the lineup. Like you playing? You paying this? You paying? Oh yeah, he he sits out unpaid too. By the way, yeah. So he'll sit out unpaid for home games, and then. And then he can take more energy, so he'll do more shots and do more crossovers and stuff at away games. So he'll probably drop. Bro, you don't know Kyrie like I know Kyrie. Let me about to do no more, <laughs> no less. No, nah, I think he is because remember his first game when he wasn't in Brooklyn, he dropped fifty. His first no, game, I'm saying he not about to ex- expeditiously try to do better because he didn't play the home game. Yeah, facts, facts. He's just going to come in and play his regular but game. I think he's going to come in. It's going to just drop it naturally because he's going to have nah, the energy. Bro. That's what I'm saying. He does it naturally. That He don't give a yeah. fuck. This is a game to him. He, he got this on the tip of his fingers, bro. He's going to be cooking on everybody. He, it's like it's like LeBron when everybody was hitting that LeBron would take rest or whatever like a couple weeks before playoffs or whatever. And every, Oh, LeBron's resting. Yeah, because he's about to like just cook your whole team. Of course, he's going to take some rest. Except now, Kyrie's going to do it for like permanently. The whole year. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, there's 82 games, and that means that 40, what, 40 are away and 40 are at home. So that means if Kyrie can go off in those 40 games that they're away, then Brooklyn only has to really focus on their home games. And then Kyrie can say, hey, it ain't my fault y'all lost by 30. <laughs> <laughs> Like KD be like, hey, it ain't my fault. I dropped 40. James Harden, it ain't my fault. I dropped 20, 10, and 10. And then Blake Griffin is like, well, I grabbed 10 <laughs> Blake rebounds. Fucking... <laughs> I grabbed 10 rebounds. Hey, yes, yes, seen that alley oop, bro. Yes, seen that alley oop. All right. It's like Joe Harris is like, what you mean? I draw a solid 12 and 5 and 5 off the bench. What you talking about? Nah, I don't think he plays them anymore. Joe Harris? Yeah, he, he was in media day. Wait, it already happened? Yeah, yeah, I think it was yesterday, or the day before yesterday. Oh, damn, already? Yeah, because the Lakers got a 360 squad. They got number three with Anthony Davis, LeBron at six, and uh, Russell at zero. They got their new core big three called 360. Oh, God. I was like, wow, that's actually... And I think I think LeBron did it right on the spot in media day. He was like, hey, you go here, I go here, and you go there, and look, 360, boom. Like, oh, snap, we didn't even think about this. Don't worry, just act like we did. <laughs> like we pre we pre planned this. Don't worry about this. We've been in the league. Oh my god, with Carmelo too and everyone now. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Dude, that that is crazy. Like they have a whole team of all stars. I love the Lakers, but that's just looking. I don't know. Defensive Player of the Year, LeBron MVP. How funny, this is gonna be Lakers Clippers. No, it'd be really funny if it happens the same thing that happened in like the Lakers when like Kobe got all the uh, all the stars. Or whatever, and it's like the team was just so riddled with injuries, and it flopped so hard. It's just like oof. To the point where Steve Nash says his favorite and best play as a Laker was when he did those super really complicated uh, soccer tricks in the uniform on on the floor in like <laughs> during the game. Yeah, get this fuck out of here. Yeah, I was like, that was your favorite moment as a Laker? Like, oh my goodness, because he was injured like ninety percent of the time. And like Kobe was like, yo, even though like I hated Steve Nash on the Suns, I hated Dwight Howard on the Magic, I'll let them be on this team or whatever, and we'll get another chip. All these dudes was injured. They ain't do nothing. It might be the same thing because now you got Melo, you got Dwight, you got LeBron, you got uh, Russell, you got all these people that on their own prime, they were top tier. But now, I mean, I wouldn't say they're not top tier, but now they're just all in one team. It's like, oof. I don't know if it's that, that's unfair or if they're not going to have the chemistry there just because... I don't know. I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. It, and if they do, if they like win like 82 games a year, oh my goodness, that would be hilarious. Or if they come when, close. They're too old to win 82 games. I don't know. They got to... Yeah. To, to be honest, Anthony Davis is a softy. I don't think they're no, going to Did you see their bench? The did you see their bench? You, you're saying... When, do you understand what you're saying? You're saying they literally will beat every team and never lose a game. Do you see... The, they're literally fighting the champions. They're going to be fighting Miami Heat. They're, there are too many play, teams they're going to be fighting. Brooklyn Nets, like, they're not going to win every game. Kendrick game. Nunn comes from the Heat. Malik okay, Monk. say the rest of the bench. You only say those two names. I got to look up the other guys because the those are the only ones. Because those two names, they're, they're exciting young guys, but they, they don't pose no threat in the playoffs. You think so? I think if they give the op- given the opportunity, they can. Yeah, no, no, Rondo's still in the Lakers now, and um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rondo's on there. Tht. I wonder. I wonder if Rondo's gonna leave like a second, second um string, since uh Rondo. I mean, since uh Bro Brody is gonna be on like 
starting, I assume. I'm a, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming and that's a great way because then you have Rondo facilitating the bench and then the bench is full of good people too. It's like, bruh. Here we go. Trevor Ariza, Carmelo Anthony, Kent Bazemore, Wayne Ellington, Talon Horton, Tucker. Then you also have DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, Mac McClung, Malik Monk, Kendrick Nunn, Rajon Rondo. Like, that's a pretty stacked bench. They better trade a few of them niggas, though. I say, okay, that's a pretty good bench. Because he, like, I mean, just, got, that, that bench is above average, depending on how they mesh. But they're not, like, stacked a lot, no. It, it's, a, it's a whole, like, think about it. What other bench is better than mainly those? They have, mainly because they possibly have Carmelo and possibly on. Clippers, maybe. You know, not the Clippers. Very opposite than the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets got no bench because they got way too many primetime stars on there. They got a lot of people who, they're like, who is that guy? He, oh, that's generic player one. <laughs> oh, what's his name? Oh, A number seven. Come over <laughs> <laughs> like what? And it's nah, funny because I'll be sad. Why? If I, nigga, if I was in the NBA and and they're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, look at it's the guy that sets screens for Kevin Durant. It's the guy that sets screens for Kevin Durant. I'll be like, I mean, if they're paying you one point six million dollars to set screens for Kevin Durant, I would do it. But up. in public, I'm gonna be discreet. And part I'm gonna be discreet though, like shit. Be like. If you don't know me, you don't know me, boy. No, nah, I'm I'm gonna yeah, Kevin Durant gonna be the top scorer, man. He gonna do it, man. Me and I'm gonna be like that. I'm gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna be like me and Kobe scored 82. Yo, yo, fat you know what? what you you right, bro. You are right. <laughs> be like, hey, I got paid 30 million. I got paid 13 million to set Kobe's screen. What you talking about? If it wasn't for my screens, Kobe's not dropping 81. And without if you thought my it was easy, where my competition at? Have I been replaced yet? Exactly. <laughs> nope. That's why, I like, when I used to see like Kendrick Perkins play, I'm like, what does this guy do that's so good? Nigga, no, Draymond Green. Like, how is Draymond Green? Nah, nah, nah. Chill out. Hold on. Wait a minute. He is. Yes, bro. No, think about it. How did he get big, though? Nah, chill out. I said in screens for Curry, nigga. I swear to God. Nah, he's a poor general, too. He very high IQ with his boy. And, no, and, um... bro. In the early Golden State years, do you not remember that there was one play, bro? It oh, was been good. Yo, listen, listen, there was one play, bro. This nigga set a screen that has like back to back five times just so Curry yeah, could yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, I know y'all remember that shit. Come on, man. You don't tell me he did. Hey, I was just saying, he more than screen, though. Nah, I, I was saying like people like, like, prime time defender. He's a prime time defender. He's a sure. high IQ baller. He, high, high like, IQ. like Kendrick Perkins, I always question, like, how is this guy in the NBA? Same with Glenn Davis, like Big Baby Davis. Like, how is this guy in the NBA versus other people? Glenn Davis, he about yeah, that. Wasn't he caught? Wasn't he caught sm- laundering drugs in on a, air, a private jet? I'm not sure, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not taking sure. a picture with him and drugs and money. I, I know. I, I'm not surprised though. He, he looked, he looked like a party first, care about everything later kind of guy. I mean, that's why they called him Big Baby. You know what I'm saying? Because he was a big baby. <laughs> but it always made me question, like, there's other because because in the NBA, it's like the top 400, 435 people. There's got to be somebody else that's taller that wants to want it more. Because I'm just a commentator. I ain't saying that I'm better than Glenn Davis or better than. Nah, than Kendrick. but also, bro, I think we, I think commentators gotta stop. Commentators gotta stop. Like commentators, like Perkins and Davis and and Whitlock and all those other unnecessary motherfuckers that judge players and make them want to be sensitive little fucking princesses. I feel like it's the commentator's fault that privileged players play how they do, so um, high maintenance and shit like that. Not not saying that they shouldn't be, but I feel like once people get to the NBA, it's like they, they feel um more, more pressure to be smooth or stylish or have a brand and this and that and it's not focused about how the fuck they got to NBA, which was pure fucking skill and dominance, which was what Jordan had, what MJ had. Can I ask you a question, Justin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you like money? Um, or do you like basketball? Which one, which one do you like more? Oh, shit. Well, sir, if we could live in a world where we won't need money, I would love basketball more. Because <laughs> I would like this guy. Okay, I'm just like you saying your little ideals, but I mean, like, hey, once you make it with your basketball, which was oh, forty bro, to make it for money, ideas. it's it's just what players can do, bro. It's it's not even that, bro. Marketing marketing schemes is the league's job. A player's job is not to market 
Hey, but if you see another revenue, why aren't you, why would they not go for that revenue? What Bro, you talking about? Because you're not being an effective player. Michael Jordan didn't hey, give the, f- they get paid. That's effective enough. All they whoa, 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 whoa. Michael Jordan. No, 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 no. He cared no, I'm sorry. He cared about revenue, but he didn't give a fuck about sponsorships. Hey, the everyone trying to eat, they want their money. They don't care about getting a ring. After they don't care a ring. You know what he cared about? He said. Oh, this motherfucker is sitting on cross me on Tuesday. It's a job. You worry about how much money you're making. It's a job. They just make exactly. more. Exactly. You get you get check on your performance, and your performance is every night. You gotta cook motherfuckers every yeah, night. But if they if they sell them and they pay elsewhere, their performance can be a little lackluster. My guy. Wait, wait. You know what Michael Jordan said? He said, he said, "Fuck them kids. Give me my money. Give me Nike. I'm gonna create Jordans because I make money." And I like money. So I need my J. I need my shirts. I need my shorts. I need my shirts, my jacket. I need everything. And none of you kids in this camp are getting any of this for free. Y'all, y'all parents got when you money. You get six to- rings, you can do that. Bro, he was doing that before his rings. He did that before. Get to do that, man. You, you, they got a lot of people making money off off apparel and other uh, ventures. I think he did that between like who, who, his. You think Chris Paul do that shit? No, Chris Paul don't do that shit. He don't got no Hello, rings. But he got he got a State Farm commercial and stuff, making money on the side, doing other things, doing a lot of investing. That nigga's Cliff. That nigga ain't even Chris no more. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, he was doing hey. that before a ring. He did that in New I Orleans. Like, hey, why? Why the point for you to make it through with the sport is for you to make money. The sport can be you. You have to stay good at the sports. You can make more money, but it's the the main point is to get the money. And so, if you've sacrificed a little bit of the sport, if you sacrifice a little of your game because you can make more money outside, focusing on some business stuff, I'm pretty sure a lot of them made that kind of sacrifice, not trying to work towards the ring, just trying to make sure they still get paid and you make money. That's why. That's why the people say they chose money over rings. Just like Carmelo, they chose money with New York over rings. It's a, it's a choice. You make you play basketball and get that money. Most people. Well, you see young players like Ben Simmons getting large ass contracts and going crazy, running around with Kardashians and shit, just because they want to look pretty and style their game. Look, this motherfucker try to do a pretty ass pass when he could have done a nice layup to win a game. It's 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 all about your game, bro. That's it. The game presents itself. At least that's how I feel. And if, yeah, like, that's just, I just love basketball, bro. And, like, that shit is ugly when you know you could, when you see a player and you know that he could be a very uh, effective, but he just wants to be a pretty stylish motherfucker. Like, bro, what? Yeah, like, dude, it's like, it's like when you play at the YMCA. That's that's separate arguments. That is separate arguments from, from, from which one more important, focusing on the money or the, or the, um, or the or the game of basketball. But it's connected either way, bro. Because how the fuck did you get how did you know Ben Simmons? Because of those stupid high school basketball highlights. I mean, that was nice. He played with D'Angelo. You don't talk about Ben Simmons unless those highlights came out. I'd- but it's all for the end for money, bro. The them highlights were out because people wanted to watch it because they would get clicks for money. And then him doing all that with him trying to get the NBA from and then they want to and then they want to go to the gym and see it live and pay that premium. And then he what he did was he leveled out. He was good enough to get the contract and he just stayed at that level. He didn't have to keep getting better. But I'm not blaming him for getting better. But what I'm mad at is players demanding more when you don't give it. You feel me? How do you how do you want? Oh, see, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're agreeing with us, but you're, you're agreeing with them, but you're on like a different point. You you want you want a regulation where they don't get paid as much because they're not getting better. Is what you're saying? You want be like they have to show them not not a regulation necessarily, but I just want people to just stop overhyping motherfuckers. Like just oh, people be overvalued. Like oh my god, you see this kid? He's gonna be drafted in 2027. Are you talking like the max money for that uh tall blocking man in um Utah? Like yeah, that's that's a good Rudy reason. Go like, bear bear. It, that money is kind of worth it, but just because. No, no. The only reason that's worth it is because they got a good ass score in Donovan Mitchell. If Donovan Mitchell wasn't there, he would not be effective at all. Wait, but that doesn't make sense because he's an offensive minded player, and Rudy is he's defensive. Not Who? You said because because Donovan is there, but what does his defense have to do with his offense? It, exactly. What does Rudy Gobert's defense have to do with Donovan's offense? No, I'm saying they cover each other. He's saying they cover each other flaw. Without without Donovan Mitchell's offensive output, Rudy Gobert wouldn't have a place on the team and wouldn't be as valuable on the team because with Rudy Gobert's defensive presence, they would want more yeah, from him. Because Rudy Gobert would be a liability because he doesn't provide as much offense. And Don, without Donovan Mitchell's offense output, then they would need to offset that in the scheme. But because of Donovan Mitchell's ability to score so much, 
it and then Rudy Bear can cover the defense. But even end. though there could be a defensive team, and it makes it more valuable. Defensive teams don't make it all the way. I'm sorry to tell you, we all love the Memphis Grizzlies. 2004 Detroit. We, we all. Get, uh, you if you can, they have to have defense and get rebounds. And defense and boards because more second chances through the defense is what makes them win. Second chances through defense with the rebounds and steals is what makes them win. That's why a defensive team is good. It's the offensive rebounds and the and the steals and such and the pressure. The difference between a defensive team and a team that got heart is what it is with the fucking Pistons and you feel me. A team that has heart plays defense. Yeah, that's why defense wins that's games. There, there, there's, there's like look, look, the Bucks won because Drew Holiday ripped that shit from the uh, exactly you know the, the Bucks because they played defense. Yeah, exactly. You're talking about they played defense. Defense winning. They, they were they were low scoring teams on the most of the year, but they played defense. As long as you play that, not even run. Fucking Chris Paul had like ten turnovers. And, and and they were candidates. That's why I said, like, what does Donovan's offense have to do with Rudy Gobert's defense? Because Rudy Gobert's defense alone, because if you're stopping enough plays, anybody else can step up and score. But it's very because look, let me let me explain this to you. Let no no let me. It's his contract that wouldn't be valuable. I wouldn't say he wouldn't be as a valuable piece. Oh, 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 as a GM, as a GM. Let me explain this to you. If you have a queen on a chessboard and then you have the rook, the rook valuable because it, with the queen together, they can cut off an intersecting point. But it, imagine that queen is going, the rook can only move in lines left and right. And so it's not as valuable because it can't pin nothing down. So for Rudy Gobert, he only can move in like lines and back with, with defense and stuff. But with, with, with uh, Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell can do the scoring and killing, and then Rudy Gobert can do the blocking and defending. Mm-hmm. And without without that, Rudy Gobert, we still valuable center in 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 whatever team he playing. He just wouldn't be getting paid as much because his productivity wouldn't be as valuable because they wouldn't need as much of that defensive edge. They would need have player that is more hybrid of defense and can do like post move or defense and and because he can't really do post move like more defense. So that's what I'm saying. His wouldn't be as more valuable. His specific skill set fits their team very well because of Donovan Mitchell's specific skill set. Mm. Exactly, and to add to that, he's he's so well known defensively because Donovan Mitchell's offense is so fast paced. That they both change the game's trajectory that he has to play defense faster and more intensely so Donovan Mitchell will get out and get buckets faster and better and quicker. And that's how the game is. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, that's how the game's progressed. Pretty soon, like, all centers are going to be, like, six foot nine or shorter, shoot threes and whatnot. You'll have, you'll pre- I'm pretty sure, like, in five to ten years, it'll look like a YMCA run. That'll be all KDs. God forbid if there's any war though, cause we all smell. Bro, it'll coming. be it'll be looking like like a whole. You said war? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, war for water, dog. What about the war for water? Like for gasoline? About... We better have war for everything. Yo, what, what com- we gotta look at what country got good wells. We gonna nah, be invading. There's a new technology that just got released a couple weeks ago, just like Star Wars, where they're uh, literally taking air and converting it into a drinkable, potable water. It's like literally sucking up. Oh, maybe we won't have water. Yeah, it's literally looking like uh the the stuff on 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 Tatooine and like different Star Wars stuff where it's like this cylindrical little thingy where like it literally just sucks up air and then it just dishes out water. And that's gonna be crazy because then if you put that in like every major city and stuff like that, obviously people are gonna make it financially uh an incentive like only the rich. Acceptable. Yeah, like only the rich people get to have like air water versus you guys get to have the dirty ground water. <laughs> like, hey, we get to have air water. Don't worry, the survivors will figure out how to make it with some piece of wood or two by four. Maybe they'll make it out, and get some nets. Like we've we've been we've been doing this for eight eons. Dude, I told my dad that, and that was the first thing he said. He was like, "What they what they do with technology? It's like, yeah, they they're they're able to create water from thin air now." He's like, I, mean, "I could do that too." I'm like, yeah, "Fuck that!" Like, shit. What? No, you can't. They just Man, they don't think that those straws that purifies the water. Yeah, but it's like it's a it's rad because it's literally you're taking oxygen from the air and you're just taking out the uh I don't know I don't know how it's done honestly. No, 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 I'm saying I'm saying there's there's some straws that they But it's not moisture. I think they're actually taking out air and putting it into liquid format into creating water. And for and for I mean, air itself has a bit of H two O in it. Right. That, I think I, I think that's what it is, and they're just doing it at such an efficient rate that pretty soon they're. Think about it. You might even be able to have like one of those air type of things in your house where you don't need to pay for the Lorax. You know, you seen the movie The Lorax? Nah. Oh my, yo, yo, Fred, you never seen the movie The Lorax? I saw the movie The Lorax back in high school, man. I, I had a, I had a whole pizza. It was oh like pizza Lord. day. <laughs> <laughs> Food. Yeah. Ah! I 
fucking good pizza, man. We, I, I, I rolled the pizza bad. into the room. Oh, that, that oh nigga, pizza. you still fat, bro. <laughs> Brad's like, man, I taste that pizza. I'll never forget that pizza, man. They were selling air. The movie, the movie thing, they were selling air, bro. Literally, bro, yes. I promise you, that was one of my business ideas. I used to think about it because I used to always see China with all their smog and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I could just like sell them like air from the mountainside and then just ship it over. But then I was like, the, how would they know? It's like, they wouldn't care. They'd just be like, fresh air. And then they'd open it up. And, and then like a couple years later, I think it was like in 2015 and 2016, there was a company in like France that was selling that. It was literally selling air to China. And they were making good money too. And I, I think something happened where it's like they find saw a little problem. Yeah, but it, think about it. It's like you open a plastic thing and it, you're just breathing air. And it's like, but it costs like two hundred dollars or whatever a container or whatever. But in a city, Plus, yeah, in a in a city full of you know contaminated air in different places in China with the smog. Man, just fifty nine ninety five. I can get you a bottle of air. Yeah, you know, it's it just like a candle, but it's just shorter. And fresher. And then rich people obviously are getting the premium deluxe version, which is like a whole closet. Hey, hey, hear me out, hear me out. I send you, I'll send you a limited 12 ounce bottle of air. Limited time free test run. <laughs> Five, uh, it, it, all you have to do is pay shipping. And then I then I provide the shipping. So really I'm charging I'm charged twenty five dollars for shipping when it's really only five dollars, but I own the shipping company. Well, twenty five dollars. That's why that's how people make their money. Because the they fi- they figure out how to get rid of the high expenses, which is usually getting the product out to the client, which is the distribution. So when you have access to controlling your own distribution and you charge something like 10, 15, but the expenses is only like two dollars or three dollars. Because when you do it at a high volume, like in the thousands or maybe in the millions of volumes, it's affordable to be able to do it, you know, because if you have a lot of clients and you get a lot of purchases, it's not that hard. But yeah, when I saw that technology about the the ability to actually get water from thin air and now we're still having a water crisis but now this new technology is discovered i know for a fact somebody's gonna be like either that technology cannot exist one or two only the people who can afford it can actually use it so a lot of people might be malnourished or died to like not having access to clean drinkable water when pretty sure pretty pretty sure in the future they're going to be rich kids that are just going to be like having that on all the time and just getting all the oxygen wasted or all the water out of the oxygen just like into water and that water just like running down getting wasted man what bro we're gonna be out of water come 2025 no i'm kidding i'm kidding probably 15 years from now i'm like man all I know is, man, in my lifetime, what what, what crisis are we gonna go through? What's our next crisis? Listen, bro. If I need to survive, I'm gonna pee, right? I'm gonna boil it, separate the pee, bro, bro. From what liquid? You gonna from what liquid? Pee comes. You have to have drunk something or have some liquid in your body to pee from. When you on your last, when you on your last, ain't no water. We- your saliva, your saliva also goes down into your throat and it transfers. You can have no water, bro. You can be at that point. You can have no saliva, man. You can be looking dust. It's like your body said, like, nigga, just you, nigga, you imagining about food, you start to salivate. Bro, I'm saying if you're, you have no liquids and stuff because you're, you're dehydrated, you're not going to yeah, salivate bro. nothing. You can't. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm going to make fucking, I'm not saying I'm going to piss gallons of water, nigga. I'm just saying if I got to survive. Dehydrated state, good luck pissing because you ain't going to have, you ain't got nothing to piss. Yeah, you got to have what I'm saying. You have nothing to piss. You, you, what? You, you can't. I'm going to go back to ancient times and I'm, I'm drinking blood, nigga, to make me piss. I'm drinking blood to make me piss. <laughs> Oh my God! You know, but dude, I think I think that will be the the next crisis is is the lack of water or at least accessible drinking water to a lot. And it's not it's it's not going to be a crisis until you know it starts happening to a certain group of people because other people in third world countries already have that issue. Because there's already a lot of there's already a lot of places that are having deserts drying up in there. Drying up lack of city it's only going to be lack of city. No, it's home. only going to be once it starts affecting like the the you know quote unquote important people. I said, like, oh, now there's no water. Like the Europeans or the North Americans. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, it's a crisis now. And like every country in the world that has that issue, it's like, uh, yeah, we've been saying this for the past like 100 years. Yeah, we're kind of we're kind of like on Mary Joe. We're kind of like on Mary Joe Island. Yeah, we like, really are. I just like don't know what's going on on the other kingdoms. <laughs> the news it's like, like, hey, did you hear there's yeah. a war over there? It's like, war? 
Hmm, interesting. I wonder. That's crazy, bro. Look at them pictures. Oh my god. Oh my god. We should send some money. Poor souls. Poor souls. Uh so so are you gonna go over there and help? What? Help? What you mean? They might kill me over there. Let me just stay over here with my comfortable Bluetooth headset or my comfortable chair, cozy. Let me go let me go to the bathroom where I can just turn on hot water, you know, whenever I want and just leave it running. You know, let me flush toilet and then get a brand new thing. Cause you know there's a, diff- a lot of places out there where you gotta go to an outhouse. Let me use my bidet. Yeah, yeah, like, like uh, I think you sent me a video of a guy, like, I think it was in Nigeria or whatever, where he's, like, touring everywhere, and, like, the house looks amazing, and, like, the bathroom's in an outhouse, and I was just like, man, this house looks amazing, why is the bathroom in the outhouse, though? Like, it looks like a million-dollar mansion, but, like, the bathroom is outside, <laughs> and even the even the outhouse looked pretty good, but it's still an outhouse, like, you couldn't do plumbing? It's like nah, in those countries, plumbing is not like that. Like what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was looking at going. I was looking at the one with Nigeria over there. Some, yeah, I was like, what? Yeah, I'm good. I'm too. I'm too spoiled. I was like, what? Well, I was like, wow, that house is only fifty thousand. Going outside, I'm gonna get shot. I'm gonna just stay inside my house all the time. Everything be delivered anyway. Yeah, it's like, what? Someone just give me a real expensive compound. Yeah, it's like, what? What does that house lack? Like, it's too good to be true. It's like running water. It's like, oh, running water. Okay, I- everybody consult. I'm um, consult video via video chat. In my compound, I'm not going to go hey, out. Hey, but that, that's actually pretty cool because now you can let people know that you work remotely as as long as they have <laughs> internet access. Yeah. Even if they have like dial-up or whatever, you'd be like, hey, I can turn the settings down in my computer too to match your settings. Or this could be audio only. You know, phone call. And it's like, hey, I'm charging by the... Yo, 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 yo. Bro, let me tell y'all. Let me, I got to get y'all opinion on this before we, before we, before we close. Got to get y'all opinion on this. I saw this on, I saw this on social media. How far away, or how would you feel if you walked into a gym and your girlfriend was doing squats on the squat rack and she had her male personal trainer um, spotting her? Like, how many inches away does he have to be from her? Um, Nigga, nowhere near her. Like, I saw he was right behind her, like, full on. Nowhere near her. She just had to, she had to, she had to squat a little deeper and them cheeks was, you know, clapping together <laughs> on him. You feel me? I'm just like, I'm just like, do you consider that cheating if you walk in your girl person train doing squats like that? Like, that, that, that consider like possible foreplay with like not, not touching each other? Like, how y'all think about that? No, that's not cheating. It's just like stupid. That's just it. I mean, that's interesting that that you would even assume that my girl would have a personal trainer, not me. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> you want to go to the gym? I bet. You can't. You can't be in the gym. Where you're trying to make money and be a businessman. You can't be following her. You should probably be at the gym while you. Nah, I'd be like, I got a gym at the house. You better use the gym at the house. But I need somebody to stop, spot me. Well, I could get you a mirror and you can spot oh, yourself. You have some good money. Have a full gym at the house. Oh heck yeah, I'm working on it. Talking about. If my girl backing it up any kind of way on any what? Video, then, what? Uh, it's not my bro, girl. To, he, bro, she 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 doing 145 pounds. She need a, she need a spotter, bro. Be like, yeah. bro, bro. If she, if she can't lift it, fucking she doing. Yeah, I'll be like, well, hold on. That's the point. Like, what the fuck is she Why you doing? need a spotter? Why she maxing out in the first like, rep? No, nah, no. Nah. Now, my question is who you looking fit for? Because I already like you how you are. Hold on. Wait a minute. You trying to... What are you talking about? She got to stay fit. You wilding. Now, hold on. Hold on. Man. You just... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I was like, hold on. Why are you trying to look cute for this for this trainer? Because I already like you how you are right now. Hold on, wait a minute. Why you... Nah, they can still we can still work out together. Like, hold on, now she can still work out too. Nah, I'd be like, why are you so eager to go to the gym, bitch? Huh? 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 Who you want to see? Who you want to see? Good, I'll make good money. So I'll just be like, hey, five hundred dollars. My PI. Just follow her for a day. Just take a big. Just, just follow her for, for a week. Let me know. Let me know what yeah, she's doing. Yeah, follow her for a week. Your PI is gonna be like, uh, yeah, he'll come back. He'll be like, she, she got multiple personal trainers, bro. You don't want to know what happens in that steam room. What they training? What they training on? He talking about how to go deeper. I'm like, <laughs> now, what the, what, now, what? Imagine, now imagine he's like, no, they have an open session and what? Now there's like three other females, but the trainer who has an eight pack, he he does his sessions shirtless in like uh really short shorts where you can see all his muscular thighs and muscular upper body and stuff like that. And whenever he spots it, he makes sure to get real close and let them know this is how you want to grab the bar, just like this right to, <laughs> and, uh, he makes sure that he just he whispers it right in the ear like this is how you want to grab the bar like what be like no 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 he whispers he whispers do you feel that you got and then they're like oh my. and then after class they're, just, they're always like all happy like yeah this is all for our husband so that way we can look for our you know our best for our husband bro you'd be so twisted about how to like man what do i even do like oh my goodness like she's doing what i want her to but not what i want her to <laughs> 
And we train, we change them, man. You getting a female personal trainer, dog? Chill out. What you talking about? Yo, there's a that's. I I think the female right? personal trainer. I would prefer a female personal trainer too. Them bitches is intense. I need a eunuch. You you either gonna be alone with a eunuch or a woman. <laughs> why 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 you think why you think kings uh, kings used to do that? Like everybody in this building ain't having a penis except me. <laughs> hey, eunuchs wear straps, bro. Nah. <laughs> I don't care. I ain't got to worry about my seat being being not mine. Yeah, bro. That's why I'm be like, nigga. So you, whoa, 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 whoa. So you wouldn't give a fuck if your if your girl got hit with a strap? No, I still care. But I'm just saying the most. I was about to say. I was about to say. What the fuck? No, I'm, no, I'm, I still care. I'm just saying my seed's still be mine. Nah, I, like I said, I still would be like, man, that's pr- that's. Uh, and yo, how many stories though are just like out of spite the eunuch like got a strap on, just like got up in there, and and even though he couldn't like pregnant, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. she still like my my strap on better than you though. Like how many eunuchs I wonder was still was still pleasuring because they had a strap on back in the yeah no but I don't I don't think I don't think they had the urge once once that piece is removed yeah not even I feel like it was more like a trauma kind of not even the trauma but there's so many nerve endings like there's like four thousand nerve endings on the head once you get rid of that I wasn't talking like for enjoyment I'm saying out of spite like you took it from me I know I know not that ma- I'm assuming not that many like I would have to say like very very rare because you don't even have the urge to do it so like to do it you ha- you would have to do it out of spite and I don't think that many people would, would do that out of spite you'd have to be like you'd have to hate that person oh yes yes I agree it wouldn't be that you'd have that to be big. willing to risk your death in order to do that like literally you would be risking everything yeah, that's true. Like at least if you had a, if you had like a penis head, you know the guy's just horny. It'll be your dear, you and your family death. Right? Yeah, it's like everybody that yeah, because if if you already had a family and then you got your your became a eunuch and whatnot, you know that. No, I'm talking about whoever the whoever the um eunuch's prior family was, not their children, I mean, like their their mother, father, cousins, something like that, like their lineage. Like yeah, you you fuck the you your your uh your cousin. Oh, Lord. Fuck the emperor's wife. You're all dead. Like your entire lineage will be wiped off the face of the world. I mean, yeah. I mean, think about it. China. If you have an emperor like that, you, who got like millions of soldiers, you can wipe off any family. Just like snap of a button, be like, hey, this guy right here. He he looked at my wife funny. It's like get rid of his family, his children, his cousins, his grandma. I said, what? She was flirting with me. It's like you flirted back. You know you wasn't supposed to do that. I said, but 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 your wife is a. Uh, what did you say about my wife? <laughs> I was like, your wife was imagining me if I had a full one, sir. <laughs> this man said, bless you, my wife when she sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this dude was walking out the door and held the door for my wife too. Like I'm, I'm behind her. I will grab the door, sir. They're like you're the king. I'm, I'm her chaperone. Awesome. It's like off with his tongue. He's not supposed to tell me that. You're right though, but still. I don't care who hired him. It was you. It was you, my liege. I don't care who <laughs> hired him. <laughs> <laughs> but in regards to uh, the Ben Simmons situations and everything else that we discussed, do you guys have any upcoming projects that you guys want to discuss before we wrap up? Oh, stay tuned to blog posts. You already know the site is active, guys. Word, word. None, nothing in particular going on. You'll hear from me if I got something special. As for me, by the time this drops out, you guys are going to probably uh, get the Batay Descending audiobook. That story is out. I'm still deciding whether to do a female or male voice for the audiobook because it isn't a first person for a female and I don't want to be talking about that. I'd rather have a female. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of different people give me some opinions. Other than that, if you like the podcast, please let us know how we did. Please let us know if you agreed or disagreed with the Ben Simmons versus Joel Embiid situation. I personally think that it's just a marketing campaign. That's just my opinion. You guys can let us know in the social medias at Twitter's, wherever you guys are going to see this in this podcast episode. Other than that, uh, if you enjoyed it so much and thrilled, please leave us a review, feedback, and give us some ideas for our next topics. And we might give you a shout out too. Argue Bros, we out. You've been listening to Argue Bros. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and leave us a review to let us know what you think. Keep listening and we'll catch up with you next week.